the nature of the topic of this episode, viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I get called a weeaboo by a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people. Those ignorant folks assume that I think everything that is Japanese is better than the rest of the world. That Japan can do no wrong. That their women are the best and their culture is the richest. You know, the typical definition of a weeaboo? Boy, are you people in for a shock. There's a great many things that Japan does that grinds my gears, and today, I'm talking about one of those things. And yes, it's personal. In all of my time that I spent in Japan, I constantly heard about the aging society that Japan is becoming. And it is. Birth rates are at an all-time low, and in about 40 years, over 50% of Japan's population will be too old to work. I know this is going on a non-gaming tangent, but there's some back history I need to go over with you all to explain the relevancy between this and dating sims. I've been poking around the Huffington Post, and I came across an article that said, Far too many people in Japan have become less and less interested in a sexual relationship. Birth rate, marriages, even condom and hotel sales are dropping like mad. A survey by the Japan Family Planning Association found that 36% of males ages 16 to 19 had no interest or even just despised sex. According to the Wall Street Journal, 59% of women between the ages of 16 and 19 had no interest in sex either. This is just... wow! But Gaijin, what about all the hentai we see? Yeah, give me a minute, I'm getting to that. Let me first try and explain why this phenomena exists and why it's possibly linked to dating sims. There is this idea of nikushoku and soshoku in Japan, meaning carnivore and herbivore respectively. Men are becoming more herbivorous, docile, complacent, and quiet, while women are becoming carnivores, having the most drive and focusing on action. Also in Japan, there was this concept of sanko, or literally three highs. These include high education, high salary, and high, well, height. These were the typical expectations that women in Japan had for men. While most women have given up on this concept, a lot of younger men in Japan complain that women are still too picky. So, with all of these things clashing together, it makes sense that relationships are low on people's priority. So what in Miyamoto's name does this have to do with gaming? Well, the short answer is a lot. The long answer? Well, let's dive into it. The biggest problem is the development and encouragement of synthetic relationships. Where do these exist? Dating sims. Now, I don't think that all dating sims by themselves are bad. In fact, a few of them, like Koata Shoujo, I actually like. But something has gone very awry here. Let me start with the most famous dating sim in all of Japan, Love Plus. Now, for what it's worth, Love Plus isn't that bad a game. The closest thing you're going to get for sex is, quote, after school kissing, end quote, where you tap the stylus of the DS on your chosen lady's face. In all honesty, that's adorable. Most men I've heard from say it takes them back to their high school romances, and as I've said in my first episode, that really was the happiest time for a lot of Japanese folks. Here's the problem. A man who calls himself Sal actually and officially married his love plus girlfriend. I'm all up for letting people do whatever makes them happy. But this is a synthetic relationship. The girl is not real. It's pretty darn close to real, but it's not real. While this is the only instance where a man has married a digital gal in Japan, a lot of men take these relationships seriously. How seriously? Enough for an entire town to accept them as true couples. In the resort town of Atami, the locals usually gain their income from newly married couples honeymooning. Since marriage and relationships in general are on the decline, they had to find another way to make money. So what did they do? They redesigned their hotels, restaurants, and so forth to cater to men and their love plus gals. In 13 locations in town, men can use barcodes to have their ladies appear in various clothes for each location, standing next to them as if they were really there. Hotels will also make reservations and make up rooms for two, the player and the digital gal. Dinners will also be served for two. Now, according to the Discovery News, more than 200 people have stayed at the Onoya Hotel, one of the lodgings that cater to these players, and 2,000 have visited the town during the initial campaign. Now again, I'm all for people having fun doing their own thing, but from a demographics perspective, this is a very, very dangerous trend to follow in mass. If men are becoming more and more accepting of their virtual girlfriends instead of real ones, of course you may have a drop in your population. Now then, let's talk about that hentai that was brought up earlier. I submit to you a very valid question as a man. If you had a woman that was visually flawless, was built to every specification you wanted, didn't argue, annoy, or pester you, and would service you in any way that you desired, would you ever want a real woman? 
The best example of what I mean comes from Japan's 3D Custom Girl, where you literally make any kind of woman you want to do nearly anything your mind can conjure. Now I know a lot of you are saying, it's not as good as someone else is doing it to you. I've got bad news for you guys. People are already working on synthesizing that as well. Tech Arts 3D, the maker of 3D Custom Girl, are in the process of making a mechanical peripheral that will do the job. Just watch. So now we have a group of people in a society that is dangerously close to accepting the virtual and not the real, in a time where the country needs a bigger population to support its aging society. Women are seen as too picky and demanding, and in a lot of cases, personally, they are, while men are seen as meek, weak, and passionless, and again, in a lot of cases, they are. It's a huge problem. So I've spent all of this time ranting about this Japanese unique problem and what it has to do with video games. So why should you, an American, an Englishman, a Swede, a Canadian, a Finn, a German, a Nicaraguan, and so on, care about this? Speaking for the US, we might also fall into the same trap. Don't believe me? Go to Newgrounds, or any site that houses a lot of Flash games, particularly ones that can be called mature, and just count how many dating sims there are. Now does this mean the US is doomed to follow in the footsteps of Japan? As far as relationship and marriage goes, we are really stable. However, that doesn't mean there aren't people that could fall into this trap. Admittedly, I did. My ex-fiancé of four years left me very shortly after I arrived in Japan those years ago. Just left me for a guy for her to manipulate and control. It was the hardest six months of my life. At the same time, my grandfather passed away and my lifelong pet had to be put down. And I couldn't return home to address any of those three issues. I tried dating the local girls, but man, talk about polar opposites. To them, I was a fat nerd with horrible fashion sense. So for the time before I met Aki, I had to do what I had to do in order to fill that giant void in my heart. I plunged headfirst into the virtual. It was sad and it was pathetic, but it was one of the few things that gave me any sort of comfort on the long days and nights where I felt utterly alone in Japan. I'm sorry this got so heavy, guys, but this, this is personal. And I really thought it would be worth mentioning to those of you who are curious or interested in this particular topic. For now, I really need to find Aki and give her a big hug and a kiss. Badly. This is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.